Hi, welcome to this lab. In this lab, I'm going to take you through different app settings associated with Azure App Service using Azure Portal. So let's go through application settings. Click on here. First thing is you can able to set different framework versions. So for example, for .NET framework, you can able to specify the framework version. Similarly for PHP, Python, Java, all these things you can able to specify, okay? So if you switch on Java, then you can able to specify the container also. It can be Tomcat and New West Tomcat or if you come down here, sorry, and Jetty. So either Tomcat or Jetty you can select. And in case your ASP.NET application using socket.io, then you can switch on this here. And as I said earlier, for basic and standard, the compute power will get offloaded if it doesn't receive the request for a longer period of time. But uh, in case if you don't want it to get offloaded, then you can switch on always on, okay? And you can specify managed pipeline version. In case if you want to use the older versions of IIS, then you can select classic. But uh, most of the times leave it as integrated and you can specify here a HTTP version and uh, ARR affinity in case if you want the request coming from the user to be routed to only one of the instances throughout the life cycle of the session, then you can switch on this. Mainly this is used if you are developing stateful applications. So if you are developing stateless applications, better switch off it. Otherwise it will affect the performance of that application. Okay. And then come down here. So we have auto swap and auto swap slot. Don't worry about it at this moment of time. I'm going to explain about them in detail in the next section of the course that is deployments. And here FTP access, you can able to specify whether it is FTP or FTPS or both, or you can disable that also. So if you disable it, then you can't do FTP based deployment. And in terms of debugging, you can enable remote debugging and you can also able to specify remote Visual Studio version also. And the next two are very key application settings and connection strings. Here you can specify key value pairs under the application settings and under the connection strings, you will be able to specify connection strings. And you might have no teaser slot setting. Bear with me, I'm going to explain that in the next section of the course when I'm going to take you through deployment slots. And if you come here, default documents and handler mappings, Basically, a default document is a web page that is displayed at the root URL for a website. So whatever the first matching file in this list will be used to get it displayed. Okay. And then handler mappings. In case if you want to handle the request for specific file settings. So for example, if you want to process old ASP pages, then you can associate that to a custom script processor to process those requests for specific file extensions. And finally, you can able to add a virtual application or directory also. So all these settings that you can do under application settings using Azure portal. However, you can use other tools also to set all these settings such as Azure CLI, Azure PowerShell also, but I'm going to show that to you when we are configuring the custom domain in the subsequent lab. So let me configure an application setting here. So I'm going to call this as test and the value is abc123 okay and let's save it and see how we can access this value from our application i already developed an api app with a swagger ui enabled on it to make it easy to test this so i'm going to open that application however i know i haven't covered about api apps yet i covered in detail in the api section of the course so don't try to understand the api app at this moment of time this is just for testing purposes, just to show you how to access this value from the application code. So let's go back to the code. So this is the application I have published. I have one controller here, values controller, and I have set in HTTP operations. So in here, instead of returning this, I'm going to return that key value that I just configured using Azure portal against this application. So 
sorry one minute let me see what's the key i mentioned it's test okay that's it i'm not changing anything i'm just fetching the value of the test key but if you see in the web config we haven't mentioned anything here okay it is directly fetching from the place where we configured that is azure portal okay so let me build this and publish this okay publish has been succeeded so let's go back here i already launched the swagger ui of that api app i just changed so let me refresh this let me change this somehow it's not coming come on some problem came let me close this one off and relaunch it again let's go back to overview okay let me switch off java we don't need it actually looks like i switched on java let's switch off java and then republish it again you need to be careful when you're changing the settings see you land up in this kind of problems okay let's publish it again okay now i'm going to launch this portal again click on overview and then click on here now it's up and running let me launch swagger ui here you go now click on here if you notice we change this particular operation okay get by value and what we are returning is the value of the test key okay so let's go here it doesn't matter what on input you give try it out and then you can see here abc123 you're getting that's the value you have provided in the application settings here okay now the last thing i want to show you is let's add the same key with a different value in the app settings within the web.config file okay so here add key is test and the value is let's say i added one two three okay so what do you think which value you think will get displayed now let's test it is it going to be the value from here or from what you have configured in the azure portal so let's see it bear in mind we have used the same key here also it's test and then here also it is test okay let's see the now relaunch this swagger ui okay doesn't matter what you give here still it is abc123 what it means is whatever the settings you provide within the app settings in azure portal that will take precedence so they will override any settings that you do within your web.config file okay so that's an important thing that you need to remember when you are developing applications so that's it for this lab in this lab i have taken you through different application settings that you can configure using azure portal and also I have shown you how to provide app setting key value pair within Azure portal and how to access the same from your application code. In the next lab, I'm going to show you how to configure different settings of your Azure app using Visual Studio. That is one more way to configure your Azure app other than Azure portal. 
there are other tools also like powershell and command line interface but let's start with visual studio and when we are configuring the custom domain i'll show you how to do that using azure powershell so that's how i'm combining different ways to carry out configuration on your azure app okay so if you have some time join me in the next lab